The Mesozoic Era included the time period from about 245 and 66 million years ago, during which dinosaurs that were not birds existed. A significant number of millions of years had passed prior to the appearance of the first modern humans, Homo sapiens. Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous are the three periods that scientists use to divide the Mesozoic era into distinct categories. This period of time saw the gradual division of the land from a single enormous supercontinent into several smaller ones. The evolution of dinosaurs was influenced by the climate and vegetation changes that resulted from these transformations. Own the Triassic period. During this time period, all of the continents were a part of a single landmass that was known as Pangaea. The result was that the differences between the animals and plants that were found in various regions were relatively minor. It was a relatively hot and dry climate during the Triassic period, and a significant portion of the land was covered by large deserts. There were no polar ice caps back then, in contrast to today. The first appearance of the reptiles that are now known as dinosaurs can be traced back to this environment. Due to the fact that their skin is less porous than, for instance, the skin of mammals, reptiles are able to thrive in hotter climates. This is because their skin loses less water when exposed to heat. The kidneys of reptiles are also superior in terms of water conservation. Pangaea began to gradually split in too close to the end of the Triassic period as a result of a series of earthquakes and massive volcanic eruptions. This was the moment when the North Atlantic Ocean was first formed. 2. Jurassic Period The single land mass, Pangaea, split into two, creating Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south. In spite of this separation, Similarities in their fossil records indicate that there were some land connections between the two continents at an early stage in the Jurassic period. Later on throughout the time, these zones grew increasingly separate from one another. Temperatures declined marginally, however it was still warmer than today owing to larger concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Rainfall increased as a consequence of the vast oceans developing between the land masses. These alterations enabled plants such as ferns and horsetails to flourish across enormous expanses. Some of these plants became the fossil fuels that we exploit today. Elsewhere, there were forests of towering conifer trees, such as sequoias and monkey puzzles. The ample plant supply enabled the giant plant-eating sauropods, such as Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and Brachiosaurus, to develop. These are some of the biggest creatures that have ever walked the Earth. By the end of the Jurassic, their herds dominated the area. 3. Cretaceous Period During the Cretaceous, the land divided further into some of the continents we recognize today, but in different places. This meant that dinosaurs developed independently in various regions of the Earth, becoming increasingly diversified. Sauropods attained their highest sizes in the Cretaceous. The largest were the Titanosaurs. Patagodon was a stunning 37.5 meters long. Other groups of creatures also diversified. The first snakes originated during this period, and by the end of the Cretaceous, blooming plants were a considerably more frequent feature of Earth's plant life. There was also an appearance of a number of other insect groups, including bees, which all contributed to the expansion of blooming plants, and mammals now included those that climbed trees, some that lived on the ground, and even those that hunted down smaller dinosaurs. During the Cretaceous period, there were several instances of sea levels rising and falling, there were a great number of shallow oceans that separated sections of the continents that we know today when they were at their maximum height. As an example, Europe was composed of a great number of tiny islands. At the bottom of these oceans, thick layers of silt accumulated as a result of the death of single-celled alga and the subsequent fall of their skeletons to the marine floor. The vast majority of the chalk that we use now was first created in this manner to such an extent that the term Cretaceous originates from the Latin word for chalk, which is creta. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue learning about the wonders of the natural world, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. And don't forget to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts and any questions you may have.